Um, just before I begin, I would like to uh, just say uh, both to His Excellency the Governor of Kevin, uh, Senator Atiku uh, Madudu, that this challenge about my wife is uh, not going to work. <laughs> today, we are, we are both supporting our wives today. Both of us are supporting. <laughs> so, uh, I must make excuses because I'm not any kind of poet like my wife is. Thank you very much. Uh, Excellency the Governor of Kedi State, Alaji Abubakar Atiku Akudu, our host and wife of the Kedi State Governor, Her Excellency Hajia Aisha Bagudu, members of the National Assembly present, especially distinguished Senator Smart Adeyemi and distinguished Senator Olubumi Adetumbi. Her Excellency, the former First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Hadia Mariam Abacha. The Honorable Minister of State for Education, Mr. Chukwemeka Mwajiba. The Malawian Deputy Minister of Education, Mrs. Madalitso Kambawa Wirima. Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps present, heads of federal government agencies and parastatals present, members of the Kebi State Executive Council present, management and staff of Maopai Foundation, and my own dear in-law, Haji Abola Shagaya, who is seated there. Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. First, let me thank uh, Her Excellency Aisha Tsiku Bagudu and the Maopai Foundation team for their very kind invitation to me to attend this special Literacy Day. And I think it is fitting for the Maopai Foundation to be the host of an event to mark Mass Literacy Day. This foundation which... This foundation which in the last 10 years or so has been led by the passion, the commitment, and foresight of Her Excellency Aisha Atikwa Bubakar Bagudu has sought to make perhaps the most important contribution that anyone can make to the lives of thousands of people, and that is education. Man is the soul dynamic in nature. He or she, unlike animals, has talents and abilities to develop himself or herself and also develop the environment. A person, a man or a woman can make chairs from trees, can invent planes, cars, can invent vaccinations to prevent diseases, can do all manner of things to develop the community. It is in her place or his place to organize commerce, to organize monetary policy, to produce jobs of different levels of sophistication and reward. He or she can perform all of those functions. And these functions are human functions. Only human beings can perform these functions. But they cannot be performed effectively without the benefit of education. So when a country is underdeveloped and it is wiped out by disease, by infant mortality, it is because most of the minds in that country are underdeveloped. It is because most of those who are in that country lack education. The only known way to develop the human mind is education. And the only way and the only way by which man can live better than any other creature and live up to his God-given responsibility or her God-given responsibility to develop his community, to provide enough for that community, to provide for, the, for our children, is by education. 
Education is the ticket to the full enjoyment of all human, civil, and socio-political, and socio-economic rights. Education is the only ticket. So when we talk about human rights that have been declared and put into our laws, the only way to access those rights, including economic rights, is by education. So at the most basic level, the ability to read and write not just in one's own language, but in other global languages, is crucial. To be deprived of education is to be deprived of the means of pursuit of a dignified existence, where one can fully contest or collaborate with others for the benefits that life offers. So, so it is so important for us, especially those of us who are policy makers those of us in civil society, we owe our people a duty to educate them. We owe them that duty. We owe our people, we owe our people a duty to lift their minds to the level where they can benefit maximally from the environment and give benefit to others. Every study, every survey that we have seen confirms that education, especially of women, has a multiplier effect on everything around them. In other words, if you educate a woman, she transforms her environment completely. It usually means a longer lifespan for themselves and for their children. It means that they are less likely to die of communicable diseases, since they are more likely to understand best practice in hygiene and sanitation and follow useful material on healthcare. All of these things are possible. Everything is possible if the mind of a human being is educated. Every child has talents. Every child that is born is born with some talents, born with some abilities. But nothing will happen if they are not educated to express those abilities. So we must commend the work of the Malpal Foundation. They have, they have since 2009 been doing the difficult work of improving access to education and creating skills of uh, acquisition opportunities for the poor and for underprivileged communities. We've heard of the extensive work they've done, especially with nomadic, uh, with nomadic children the extensive work they've done in Fulani communities everywhere, trying to ensure that these children in those communities, and even the adults, are well educated. Getting disadvantaged out of school children into formal education is a big challenge, especially when, in some cases, there are obstacles on account of prevailing culture. Hadia, you have shown, especially in the case of girls, that by being sensitive and understanding, it is possible to surmount cultural beliefs and uh, practices that hinder the education of girls. There are cultural beliefs, there are all sorts of possible obstacles. But if we are sensitive to those obstacles, if we understand them and explain them well, it is possible to do much, much greater work. Everywhere, every one of the zones of our country, where there has been free education, for example, beginning with the Western region. There is first a great deal of resistance, very serious resistance. Chief Obafemi Awolo, when he introduced free education in the West, there were riots. In fact, at some point, he lost elections on account of, of his introduction of free education. But in a few short years, everybody began to see the benefits. And, as they say, the rest is history. So there is a lot to be done. We must have the courage of our convictions. We, if we say girls should be educated, we must make sure that we follow through. It may not be popular, but it will be popular eventually. What is even more touching, what is more touching for me, is that you have included those who were left behind as children and we are now creating new opportunities for them as adults through skills acquisition training and financial aid. I truly believe 
that the more lives you transform in the communities you serve, the more the mindset will shift in those communities towards embracing formal education for all. I want to commend you, uh, Hadria, and your team for the brave and selfless work you've been doing over the years. And for not giving up. And especially for not giving up in the face of many challenges. But I know that behind your great success is the steadfast support of your husband, His Excellency, Alaji Atiku Baguri. And members of your family, and members of your family, especially Mariam, who has also decided to devote her own time to the work of Malpai. It's my prayer for you, it is my prayer for you and your team, that as you have given so many such joy and hope, that the Almighty God will continually give you also joy and fulfillment, and will bless you and sustain your work and your service to this country and to humanity. Thank you all very much for listening.